Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Mid Handicap Series. One minor detail today, we haven't got Dave with us, unfortunately he's back in sunny Wakefield. So, whilst Dave is not here, we're going to talk about the five biggest things that I see most amateurs do, which is why they're still a mid handicap, why they're still off single figures and why the handicap maybe isn't improving. So, let's go straight into it. So, number one. Number one is not having a practice swing that is meaningful to the shot that you're going to play in hand. So here we've got a shot. I'm going to go to the back flag here. It's around about 70 yards. And people don't have a practice swing and are not visualizing where they're landing. If I tell you you've got 70 yards, you go and get your 70 yard club. But if we hit the ball 70 yards, it's going to land at the flag and then it's going to run past 10, 20 feet. If we do that, that's going to give us a long putt. Now the buggy's gone. If we do that, that's going to give us a longer putt. So that's going to give us a 20 feet, 40 feet, a long putt. That then encourages a three putt. So here, I'm going to do a practice swing, visualizing to land the ball probably at 60 yards, and then it's going to run out. Because I know there's not going to be much spin. I know it's going to run out there. And that's hopefully going to get me as close as possible. But again, if we're talking tour averages, Anything inside 20 feet, inside 15 feet, if you're a single figure handicap, is a good goal shot. So don't think you have to be inside five feet. Don't think you have to be within three feet. That's great if that happens, but don't be too hard on yourself. If you hit it to those distances, be happy with that. So what I would do is I've assessed I've got a good lie. So that's the first thing I've done. And here's my practice swing. Thinking about hitting it 60 yards. And both times there, I get to my finish. And what I can do if I get to my finish, I can give myself feedback. So I'm constantly giving myself the swing that I think I need to hit it that distance. And then if I do one more, and then from there, I'm going to come in now and I'm going to play that shot. Good. So landed short, landed at 60, probably ran up to around about 8 to 10 feet, which is inside tour average, so I'd be more than happy. But the reason I've been able to execute that shot is because I've done the correct practice swings before, I've thought about where I need to visualise that shot landing. It might be a 70 yard shot, but I know I need to land it at 60 and let it run out. So guys, that's tip number one. When you're on the golf course, have a meaningful practice swing to where you need to hit that golf shot. So if you're going into the green, think about where you need to land it and then have a practice swing that's going to get your ball to there if you put a good swing on it. So let's have a look at number two. So number two is what I see a lot of times when people go down to the short game area. They've got three balls out of the bag. They'll come down there and they'll just start to chip. Okay, But they've got three different golf balls. So here I've got a Callaway, I've got a Titleist and I've got a Shrikson. They're going to hit the same chip. So we're going to hit the same chip to that first flag. So the first one, I'm going to get a reasonable shot. Good. Comes off nice and high. I can see how that reacts. That's the Callaway. Now I'm on to the tight list. So that one stopped a little bit quicker. Exactly the same shot and exactly the same flight. And then the next time, come in with a Shrikson. Same flight, and that one's ran on eight feet. And they come away, they've not really gained anything, they've chipped it all right, but they've got three different results, and that's because of the golf ball. So when you're practicing, whether you're on the putting green, chipping green, or out on the golf course, ideally, I know we lose a few, I certainly do, and I know James Robinson loses more than his fair share, use the same golf ball. So whatever golf ball is in your price budget, you know, whether it's a it's a pinnacle, whether it's a Shrikson, whether it's a Titleist, whichever ball, whether it's the lowest one, whether it's a Pro V one, whichever. Use the same ball time and time again. You can then rely on that you're, as long as you strike the ball well, you're going to get the same reaction around the green. If you're hitting an iron shot, you're going to get the same distance over and over again. And if you're hitting drivers, again, you're going to get the same distance. If you switch and change golf balls, if you go from a pinnacle, let's say, to a super soft golf ball, you're going to have one that might go, let's say you hit your 
99, 150 yards, it might go 150 yards, then you hit a pinnacle and it goes 160. If there's water over the back of the green, that is no good to you and you're further away. So use the same golf ball. Even when you're around the greens, especially when you're putting and chipping, that is massive because the feel on the green is all down to, again, what club and what golf ball you're using. We can't get the same kind of spin control if we're using different golf balls all the time. That's going to help you chip it closer. If we chip it closer, we've got more chance of making the putt, we've got more chance of lowering your handicap, and we've got more chance of living the dream. So, like Dave. So, guys, that's number two. Let's look at number three. So, number three is exactly what I've just done there. People will go down to the short game area if you've got a nicely cut area. So if you've got something that's nice and easy to get contact with, you normally go and practice there, hit 10 chips, get yourself on the first tee. So, again, be honest with yourselves. How many times on the golf course are you chipping from the fairway? A lot of the times it's snuck into the semi rough or it's gone into the rough and you're chipping from the rough. So when you go down, the harder you can make your practice, if you practice, the easier it becomes when you go onto the golf course. So if I was out on the golf course practicing, dropping a couple of golf balls, I wouldn't be dropping them in the fairway where you've got a nice easy bump and run up to the flag. You'd be in the semi rough, you'd be in the rough, playing difficult shots and learning how to work, which club works for that, which shot you're gonna select. Because then when you've got that shot in a round or in a tournament, it becomes a lot easier to play. So when you come up here, give yourself tough lies. So here I'm going to get into the rough here. I'm going to get it sat down in an old divot. And I'm going to be going for the furthest flag. So again, I need to think what shot do I need here? I'm a little bit higher than the green. So I'm going to have that a little bit back in my stance. Get the club a little bit taller. And I'm just going to play a nice running out shot. So distance wise was good didn't counter for that much break. So it broke a lot more than I had. But again, good contact. I've changed my setup for the shot in hand. For example, here, I might be now sat up on the grass. We get this a lot back in the UK. It could sit on the top of the rough and even out here in the UAE. And we've got a short sided flag. So I now need a flop shot or a lofted shot. So again, I'll change my setup, I'll get a little bit further away, put that ball position back, lower the handle, and then I'm going to play that shot. One of those. Couldn't do much better from here. The other option we have to play this shot, if it was sat on the top like that, I got the loft, I played the shot, but we might go back of the stance, tall, and just try and get that going forwards and using the bank. So two different ways to play that shot there, but I've gone through different lines. I've had a sat down lie, something that sat down in the grass. I've had to get the club a little bit taller, back in my stance to get that going forwards, because I've got my 54. Then I've had one that's sat up. I've tried the flop shot. I, I executed it well, I'd be more than happy with that. But the shot, it seems, after I've done the second one, was the bump and run went a lot closer. So when you're practicing, play difficult shots. Think about playing it two different ways, potentially. And then when you go on the golf course, it's going to be much easier. So that's number three. So number three is when you practice, make it as hard as possible. Start to play different shots, have the imagination, and you're not just playing easy ones from an easy lie to a flag that's right in front of you. So guys, that's number three. So number four is very much this, the, you've come up to your golf bag, you've already got your wedge out because you've been walking down the fairway, you've got your 60 out because you know what shot to play. So here we need to think about before we've got to the ball, so let's roll this one in, we need to get to the ball, assess what the lie is. The first thing we're going to do is assess the lie, so that's what I don't see enough people do, they've got the 60 out, they know we've got a short-sided flag, so it's 60. Try and play a bit of a Phil Mickelson special, land it on the green, and hope for the best. It either ends up rolling back down into this bowl, or it ends up going into the bunker, and you've got another tough shot. So we've got to then, we've assessed the lie, we then need to choose our club. So assessing the lie first, I can see that this lie isn't, isn't perfect. So I need to think about what club I would then get to that. So I could, I would go 54. Okay, I've got my 54. And then what I want you to think is, how would you throw the ball? So to pick your shot and your shot selection, we've picked the club now because we've assessed the lie. We've decided that it's a 54. 
if I was going to throw this, how would I throw this ball? And even if you stand there on your practice range, you'll have seen this, I've done this before with Dave, is again, visualise, okay. That's going to be my percentage play. So I can get that ball rolling, getting it going towards that. Did run on a little bit, but again, we're going to be coming in with a little bit more loft with the club. Or my other option is, is that. So ended up probably a couple of feet closer, but for me to execute that shot and for you to execute that shot, that is very high tariff, very hard to repeat and I wouldn't be relying on that shot. By all means, practice away that. James Robinson has been practicing it for the last 15 years that I've known him, and he's still not mastered it, as we've all seen. So, we've got our lie here. I know now I'm gonna go a little bit back in the stance. I'm gonna aim left for the slope. Hands go a little bit higher. And then from here, we can get it. A little bit aggressive there, so my feedback there, what I would do is I would say, I don't have all my wedges with me, I would have gone a little bit less loft. I'd have got this rolling a little bit more because I know this grass is nice and easy to work with. So I'd have probably gone for a 50 or even a pitching wedge, get that ball rolling and get it falling in towards the hole. Again, this is a difficult shot. It's a high tariff shot, it's a hard pin. The biggest problem being here is that you've, been, you've ended up here in the first place. So we know that we've hit a missed guided iron shot or potentially wood and what that's then going to do is put us in a tough position so take your medicine pick the percentage shot it's better than going with a Phil Mickelson that then runs back down here I know my throw was good but that was more luck than judgment so guys that's number four okay so the fifth and final tip and something that I don't see enough amateurs do when they're in the bunkers is stand square to the target and open their left foot. So by opening your left foot, it allows you to rotate harder through the shot and be more committed to the shot that we're trying to play. What I see a lot of the times is people come in, open up with square feet, and then it's very much a dig in. They don't know where that ball's gonna go. Sometimes they'll, well, hopefully you don't miss it. That was a very good effort there. And they'll either thin it, they catch it too much, and it doesn't get out, and then they're having problems again in here. So guys, if we can come in, widen that stance just a little bit, not too far, turn this left foot out, and then what we want to do is, yes, we want to take some sand, but I want you to get the feel that you're just slapping the sand. So it's gonna take a very small divot, maybe eight inches, not what I see from a lot of amateurs when it's around about three foot of divot. So open the foot, stand square, and then from here, we've opened that club face nice and wide, and then we're gonna feel like we're slapping the sand. And you'll see, even with a 54, that comes up very high with a lot of loft on there, because I've opened the club face, so we don't need to go. This is a deep bunker. You're probably around about 10 foot higher than me at the moment. We don't need to go straight to 60. So that means more speed, more tariff. So again, foot turned out here. I'm not gonna make as big a swing now this time. Again, plenty of loft, plenty of speed, and I'm able to get to my finish position. But you'll see consistently, my divots are now square to my target. The ball's starting on target, because what I've done, again, people think as you open the club face, it will point right. But I'm a little bit further away in the bunker, so the loft now points directly up, and we'll do a video on that just for bunkers. So here again, not too wide with the stance, the foot is turned out and then we're gonna slap that sand. And again, a little bit of spin, plenty of loft, and a nice, small, consistent, compact divot that can give us a lot more consistency out of the bunker. So guys, when you're in the bunker, square that stance up, a little bit further away from the ball, open the foot, and that helps you commit to that shot, keep your speed, slap the sand, and hopefully that makes you a little bit more consistent out of the bunkers. So mainly changes that set up there and committing to your shot, but we will do a full video on this topic and show you how the loft points up and it doesn't point right. Because I know a lot of the times when people have the club face wide open like that, they think the ball will be coming straight at the camera. But just by adjusting our setup, we can get that starting online and getting it closer. Guys, thanks for watching. That's been a mid-handicap 
series video but without the one and only Dave so hopefully we'll have Dave on again in the next coming weeks when I get back from the UAE and coaching so next week what we're going to do obviously Dave's at home he is in lockdown and what he has done is he sent me an online lesson so I'm going to talk you through how I would do and show you how I would do an online video for Dave as I do do online lessons guys so if you are away if you live in South Africa if you live in Australia if you live in Canada even if you just live down south Again, we can do an online lesson, and we're going to show you next week what an online lesson looks like, what you would get from the online lesson, and how that can help you improve, especially whilst we're in lockdown. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you again later in the week.